evening everyone. Thank you for being here. First, I would like to introduce the Nahuatl Sur team. Eduardo Gallardo, Dante Lozano, Fabian Rey, Aldo Torres, and myself, Michelle Sano. We issue a bad recommendation of Yonava, the second largest energy infrastructure company in Mexico, with a target price of 94.6 Mexican pesos at the end of 2016, which implies a 21% upside based on the CF model and multiple price method. The key drivers that support the bar recommendation are a dollarized business with hedge detection rate, long-term take-or-pay contracts with solid client, low debt policy below 3.5 net EBITDA, and an extraordinary expected growth. Yenova has recently lost two tenders due to aggressive offers 25% below Yenova's bids. Despite, the company provides high expectation. It has four pipelines under construction, two more projects in final stage, diversification strategies, profitable offers in which its minimum internal return rate is between 9 to 10 percent, and a high experience of the board of directors, which guarantees a qualified management for the forthcoming opportunities. Yenova is a subsidiary of Sembra Energy. It operates into segment gas and energy. The energy represents 9 percent. The gas represents 90 percent of its revenue. It is divided on pipeline, storage and distribution. Meanwhile, the other segment is power generation, composed by thermal electrical and wind power. Despite the company, it's in a growing stage, it has the potential to stand out for the forthcoming options. The energy law reform aims to increase the hydrocarbon production, which requires the technology from the private sector. Mexico has the objective to satisfy the natural gas and energy demand instead of importing. In the gas segment, a new opportunity appears in the natural gas transportation by raising 21,000 kilometers of new pipeline network. Yenova can benefit by increasing its, in its distribution business and transportation in case of gaining some of the 12 bits that the Ministry of Energy has announced for 2015 up to 2019. The Ministry of Energy estimates that the consumption of natural gas and energy will increase in a 35.2% and 64.8% for 2025. Also, the domestic market expects a compound annual growth rate of 3.5% in natural gas and 4.5% on electricity until 2028. The distribution company Ecogas could benefit from the increase in the demand because the company only operates at 55% of its current capacity. After Pemex, Yenova has the biggest market share, followed by main competitors TransCanada, GDF Suez, Fermaca, among others. Yenova leads the private companies with seven pipelines in operation and four more pipelines under construction. Also, it is expected to continue growing based on historical data from the past auctions where Yenova has won 30% of all the public auctions. The strengths of the company are the support of Sempra Energy, its parent company, the vast experience in the Mexican market, and the proven capacity to win auctions. Their weaknesses are low earnings per share ratio, low return on equity, and the earnings per share which could decrease in case of a secondary offer. The opportunity is a profitability increase based on the energy law reform and the threats come from the competitors winning actions and increasing their own infrastructure. The team analysis found out four core strategies among the peers. The first one is expected profitability increase, second followed by an outstanding short-term liquidity and a long-term solvency, followed by a equity formidable policy and a, a formidable leverage. The company expects a growth in the coming years, increasing EBIT, EBITDA, net income margins in the following years as a result of the forecast revenue, the startup of the new projects and the additional demand that the energy law reform triggers. Standing out, the company in its profitable radius. Yonova stands out also for its low debt ratios. Even though the liquidity rate has been decreasing for the last years, the company is still highlighted in the market and has a potential growth in the upcoming bids. Another surplus trading his low solvency 
ratio because its main strategy consists in maintain below a 3.5 net debt EBITDA. Also, the company has a very low solvency ratio, ratio uh, over their years. This is as the lowest indebted enterprise in the Mexican power market. Also, due to the due to the new projects and the new debt policy, the company also have a very low leverage ratio, which ranked with a 0.01 percent probability default and was granted with standard pools with a triple A. Also, the company has a steeper increase in liability asset and liability equity, which places also in a lowest average in the industrial mean. For last, throughout the years, you know what? You know what conserve also a financial structure of 70% equity, which is playing also with its low return on equity. Genova pretends to follow these trends, so they spent a 330 million shares in the short term in equity for the purchase of the venture. The evaluation methodology incurred to calculate the target price were DCF and multiple price model. DCF is based on three different scenarios, where Genova acquires seven tenders on the optimistic scenario, four tenders in the moderate and none on the pessimistic scenario, out of 12 possible bids. Among all the uh, competitors, Yenova has shown an advantage in short length pipelines and bids linked to its current pipelines. For the free cash flow, we use capital model, giving us a whack of 10.36% as shown in the table. The main assumption was the revenue growth, which variates in each scenario in the expected bids and initial operation dates. Monte Carlo analysis was used to calculate the target price and the probability of occurrence of each scenario gives us a probability of 35% for the pessimistic scenario, 60% for the moderate and 5% for the optimistic scenario, giving us a target price of 96.87 Mexican pesos. The, the other method, price multiple, calculated the volatility of the company in its multiples enterprise value EBITDA, enterprise value revenue, and price earnings per share. We forecasted since the initial public offering the daily historical volatility instead of in multiple spheres, as you know it's in a growing stage and its, and its competitors are appearing on a mature stage. This gave us a target price of 92.48 Mexican pesos. As a result, the average value between DCF and multiple price method gave us a target price of 94.6 Mexican pesos. Given the nature of the sector, Yenova's valuation considered relevant risks. With the energy law reform, entry of new competitors is expected. The possibility of win auctions could be reduced as we saw in the last two, won by Carso and TransCanada. Offering a low net present value is essential for being competitive. Increasing the exchange rate affects taxes paid by Yenova, as occurred in 2014. Long-term take-or-pay contracts do not consider economic variables such as inflation, interest rate, and exchange rate. Insufficient natural gas production could increase LNG imports. The company stands out by delivering its projects in budget and time. Significant delays could result in additional charges. The right combination at the time of financing new projects is essential for the image. A bad image could decrease its profitability. Legal framework controlled by the Energy Regulatory Commission dictates the fees that have to be paid by users, restraining its cash flow. Therefore, we consider the pertinent risks for each valuation method. We issue a buy recommendation with a target price of 94.6 Mexican pesos based on Genova's shifting overview. Since its initial public offering in 2013, Genova has increased its market capitalization by 128%. Its core financial strategies provide confidence in the company's future, remarking Genova as the lowest indebted company. The energy reform boosts a potential growth in Genova's market share and the strong management represents an advantage against its peers, where its past experience is a decisive driver to define its permanent position. Expecting an outstanding 21% net income growth for 2016, Yenova is a must for investors. Thanks for your attention. about
the Fibra A. Could be, uh, could help the company in the future for finance, or could be a great competitor. about Ferrari and the answer is that they, it's a possibility to have uh, Ferrari for its assets but I think that the company is stable and we, don't, we do not consider this asset for the valuation method because we didn't want to contemplate something that is not secure so we only estimate everything with its swaps because the company has interest and exchange swaps. Um, we established stable cash flows for its long-term take-or-pay contracts. Uh, a similar companies in Mexico are involved in bad practices. Do you believe that the board have uh, strong policies against the corruption? Yenova has an ethics contract with your, with your employees that tells that the ethics must be established and also that the employees they have such as the CEO Carlos Luis Sanquistán and Jeffrey Dulles have shown to be some people with vast experience and to have confidence in them as they have written politics and have confidence in the, what the, they, were, they will do will affect the company in a positive way. So cor corruption is not such a problem in between the aesthetics. As one of our assumptions in the Monte Carlo analysis and the, and the multiple price method, we've, we considered some multiple, well, some risks that were not well, actually, consider this as our main risk as they have a, a probability of occurrence um, very low. So, um, if I don't know, corruption affects, it would affect the minimum. And if the main risk plus corruption of those problems affect, the target price will decrease, but it's a probability that is very low. But it will also be considered the Monte Carlo analysis. board of directors have a lot of experience in this sector. Uh, for example, San Cristan uh, has been in, in the SFA and Chemex and more, more, more directors have been in the government, the Mexican government and the United States government and we trust that they have a qualified management for their coming options. Well, uh, since the multiple method weights 50% and uh, especially in Mexico is a new uh, industry, we're developing a new industry, a private industry in energy, uh, maybe what happens in the Mexican market is not necessarily what would happen in other mature markets. So, uh, considering this and trying to link the, your risk analysis to the Methodology. Uh, what could be the, the main uh, risks to the valuation and the range of this valuation if, for example, we experience some uh, volatility or, or the prices of energy continue for a long time at these levels and uh, how it's going to range the, your target <coughs> Price if this risk come into place and, and have a greater role. In the multiple method, we consider all the risks that we described before. As you can see, well, as in the graph, there in the in the first part, we consider the bar at 94 and 95 per percent confidence, and our our lowest price could be if that happened 62.71. This is, this is 
a, a, an effect that is going to impact the whole industry worldwide, or, or is there uh, or is there a specific risk in Mexico because we are uh, developing a new uh, economic sector here? The because, main risk because in this multiple uh, analysis, the, the companies that, that you are comparing in other tool are basically foreign companies. So no. are, there, are there risks in Mexico that can change this uh, analysis and the impact on your price could uh, be affected by other uh, variables? There is a Mexican company, Grupo Carso, which actually won the last tender, well, two tenders ago, I mean. Uh, it won by bidding 25% below below Ianova's bid. Also, the main risk uh, at the time of construction, it will be at the time of construction. As I told you, significant delays could result in additional charges. The main risk that Yanova is facing, in our opinion, is the, the time of construction with the pipelines. In addition, in the multiple simulation, we only consider Yanova as multiples because the other company are in a mature, in a mature stage. So we only consider the risk for this growing company. In fact, in the pessimistic scenario, we put that Yenova wants zero, zero new actions. So even if Yenova doesn't want any action, the price increase because the operation of the project that they are in development. Also for the equity, uh, the low um, uh, return on equity, it, it could be explained because the company assets are 70% equity. So, in the difference of other companies that harm up debt and, and less equity, and that helps to increase their return on equity. But, but even the reform, uh, the energy law reform, the company has an uptrend in their price because the projects that are in development and the projects that start operation in, in this year and in the next year. So, because of the nature of this company, the low return on equity is not a weakness? Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah. Yeah, for the, for the 70% and on their equity and the stage, and the growing stage that is, is um, now. Yeah, because you were uh, mentioning that one of the, the, actually the first weakness that you mentioned was a low return on equity. That was my question. Okay. analysis. The G represents the growth of the sector. Uh, if the sector do not, does not grow as it expected, it will impact in a 4.7% the price of the... Of the yes, but that's the sector. I mean the efficiency of the company. How good they are doing their business? Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, that's the role of the company. Uh, my mistake. Okay, that, that's the value. 